Minute Math, Minute Math, when you need help you use Minute Math. I'm Sean Gannon, and this is Minute Math, and today we're learning about proportion word problems. If you can buy one can of pineapple chunks for $2, then how many can you buy with $10, okay? So the number of pineapple chunks, right, we can buy, let's write that as P, okay? And we know it's $2 per chunk. So if we have $2 out in front here, $2 per one each pineapple chunk. So we, all right, so we now have $2 times P, okay? And we're going to see how we can buy for, with a total of $10. So we're going to set that equal to 10, and now we're going to solve for P. I divide both sides by 2, and that, or $2, right? It doesn't really matter here. Divide by 2. We're left with P, the number of pineapple chunks that we can buy, or cans of pineapple chunks. 10 divided by 2 is 5, and so our answer here is just 5. We can buy 5 pineapple chunks with $10. One jar of crushed ginger cost $2. How many jars can you buy for $4, all right? What I want to do is create an equation. I'm going to let the letter G, letter G, represent the number of crushed ginger jars that we're going to get here, right? And since they're $2, $2 per jar, 2 times G lets us set up the cost of a variable number of ginger jars. All right, so now we want to see how we can afford with a total of four dollars. Okay, so now I set up an equation. Two dollars times g, the number of ginger jars, is equal to four dollars. Now let's solve for g. I divide both sides by two dollars to get g by itself. g is now by itself and it's equal to four divided by two is two. So we can afford, with $4, two crushed ginger jars. One cantaloupe cost $2. How many cantaloupes can you buy for $6? Well, what I want to do is create an equation for this, okay? Let's let C be the number of cantaloupes that we are going to buy, okay? We're looking for it. That's what we're going to find. Now, we know it's $2 per cantaloupe, so we set up $2 times C, and that represents the cost of a variable amount of cantaloupes, okay? Now, we need we to set that equal to an end cost of $6, okay? So we set the end cost of $6 there, and now we have an equation. $2 times C equals $6. Let's solve for C. I divide both sides by $2, and I'm left with C by itself. $6 divided by $2 is just the number 3, and so my final answer is 3 cantaloupes. One package of blueberries costs $3. How many packages of blueberries can you buy for $9? Okay. What I want to do is put this as an equation. Let's let the letter B represent the number of packages of blueberries, okay? Now, they tell us that each one costs $3. So, $3 times B represents the cost of buying a variable amount of blueberries, all right? We want to see if we, how much we can get for $9. So, we set that equal to our $9, and let's solve for the letter B. Divide both sides by $3. B is now by itself, and $9 divided by $3 is 3. So our final answer here is that we can buy three packages of blueberries for $9. Shauna reduced the size of a rectangle to a height of 2 inches. What is a new width if it was originally 24 inches wide and 12 inches tall? Okay, I like to draw pictures for or to start off with this. So, we have a rectangle, all right, Shauna reduced it, and these rectangles are not to scale, to a height of two inches, okay, we got two inch height here for this rectangle. Now, they said our original rectangle, though, or we, uh, sorry, and we need to find the, the width, that new width. Our original rectangle, a little bigger, again, not to scale, they said it was 24 inches wide, and as you can see, 
and 12 inches tall, okay, 12 inches tall, and it's not necessarily proportional there, right, but we have a picture here. So our original one was 24 inches wide and 12 inches tall. Our new one, shrink proportionally, is a width that we don't know, but a height of 12 inches. So what we want to do is set up a proportion here, okay? Two inches over W, okay, that's the height over the width, is equal to, let me write that right, H over the W, that's a W here, there we go, is equal to, well, the other height was 12 inches, over its previous width was 24 inches. Okay, I'm going to put inches in here as well. Now we want to solve for the letter W, okay, the variable here. Now, if you're planning ahead, we can simplify some things. Um, it's up to you. It makes it a little easier, I think, but uh, let's do that, actually. Yeah. 12 divided by 24, that fraction simplifies to be 1 half. So that proportion, 12 over 24, is 1 half. So we have 2 inches now is equal to W, equal to 1 inch over 2 inches. Now when I cross multiply, it's a little easier. 2 times 2 is 4 inches, right? And Or inches squared, technically. And W times 1 inch. We divide by 1 inch of both sides. Right, one inch, the inch squared cancels with the unit there, and we're left with W is equal to just four inches. And so my new width here is just four inches. Ming was planning a trip to Western Samoa. Before going, she did some research and learned that the exchange rate is six tala for two dollars. How many tala would she get if she exchanged six? So, let's go set up what we know. We know that $2 is equal to 6 tala. And we want to exchange $6 and see how many talas, let's we'll say x talas, we can get. Okay? So, what I want to do is set up a proportion here. We know $2 over 6, right? We're going to say a little thing here, right? $2 over 6 tala is equal to $6 over our x tala. And now let's solve for x. Cross multiply. 2 times x is 2x equals 6 times 6 is 36. Okay? All right, 36 here. Now we have to solve for x. Divide both sides by 2. And we get x by itself, which I'll put over here. x equals 18 tala. And so there is our answer. For $6, she can get 18 talas. Jasmine bought 32 kiwi fruit for $16. How many kiwi can Lisa buy if she has $4? All right. So we know that Jasmine, she bought 32 kiwi for $16. So 32 ki kiwi here is equal to $16. Now Lisa wants to see how much she can buy with $4. So she has $4 here, and she wants to see how many kiwis she can buy. So let's let the variable k stand for the number of kiwis she wants to buy, all right? Let's set up a proportion. 32 kiwis over $16 is equal to Right? The letter K, number of kiwis that Lisa wants to get, right? Yeah, Lisa, for $4. Okay? Now let's go solve this proportion. Okay? So what I actually want to do is you can cross multiply here, all right? But since K is really by itself on the right, if I just multiply 4 to both sides, I just or bring 4 over here, I multiply 4 up, I'm left with 32 times 4 over 16, and it's equal to K. Now, to simplify this a little bit here, what I like to do is, well, 16 and 4 are both divisible by 4. 16 divided by 4 is 4, and 4 is 1. Now, 32 divided by 4, that's easy. So now we have k by ourself. we put it up here. k by ourself, flipped it around, is equal to 32 divided by 4, which is just 8. So 8 kiwis is how many that Lisa can buy with $4. If you can buy four bulbs of elephant garlic for $8, then how many can you buy with 
So let's set a proportion here. Four bulbs can be had for eight dollars. Okay. How many bulbs, that's our variable, say x bulbs, can be had for thirty-two dollars? Okay. Well, what I want to do is set up a proportion here, right? Four bulbs over eight dollars equals x bulbs over thirty-two dollars. And let's solve for x. Now, this one's actually fairly simple, okay? When we cross multiply both sides right here, 32 and 4, so we have 4 times 32, and I purposely do not multiply that out yet, because I plan ahead. And then 8 times x. Now, when I divide both sides by 8 to get x by itself here, okay, x by itself, I can find it's a little easier to simplify. 4 go and 8, right? are both divisible by 4, so they cancel each other out, and we're left with a 2 here, all right? Now, 32 divided by 2 is 16. I just find that's easier to deal with. So, our final answer here is just 16 bulbs. One bunch of seedless black grapes cost $2. How many bunches can you buy for $20, all right? So, we'll set up a proportion. One bunch... they tell us costs two dollars. And we want to find how many bunches, so x bunches, can we get for twenty dollars, all right? Finding bunches for twenty dollars, all right? So let's go set a proportion up. One bunch for every two dollars, oops, dollar sign on this side here, ignore that, equals x bunches over Twenty dollars. Okay, and so we cross multiply here this proportion, and one times twenty is just twenty. So we have twenty dollars equals two dollars times x. Now we solve for x. We divide both sides by two, and we get x by itself, and it's equal to ten. So our final answer is just ten bunches. The money used in Jordan is called the dinar. The exchange rate is $3 to 2 dinars. Find how many dollars you would receive if you exchanged 22 dinars. So let's go make a proportion here. They tell us here, for every $3, we get 2 dinars. Okay. How many dollars, x dollars here, we're looking for, would you receive if you exchange 22 dinars. All right, so let's go set up a proportion. $3 over two dinars equals X dollars over 22 dinars. So we wanna cross multiply here, 22 times three and two times X. Now, I am not actually gonna multiply that number out. You'll see why in a second. 3 times 22 is on the left here, and 2 times x is on the right. Well, x I want to get by itself, so I'm going to divide by 2 to both sides. This leaves me with x by itself on the right, and 2, well, that easily goes into 22 11 times. So now we're left with 3 times 11, which is $33, right? That's our variable for x there, or the unit. So our final answer here is just... $33. Gabriella brought, uh, bought three cantaloupes for $7. How many cantaloupes can Shot Chena buy if she has $21? All right, kind of butcher the names, but it's all right. What I want to do is set up for my word problem and kind of a ratio here, right? We know three cantaloupes, all right, these are cantaloupes. Catalopes can't. Uh, lopes. Yeah, don't make fun of my handwriting. Cantaloupes for seven dollars. If you want to see how many cantaloupes you can buy, x cantaloupes for twenty-one dollars. All right. So let's go set up our proportion. We have three to seven dollars is equal to x to twenty-one dollars. And now let's solve for that x. We cross multiply first. And now I'm not going to actually multiply 3 times 21. You'll see in a second. 
3 times 21, keep it separate, 7 times x. Now I need to divide by 7 to both sides. And hopefully now you can see why I didn't necessarily multiply 3 times 21. I knew the 7 was going to come back over. x is by itself on the right, and 7 goes into 21, well, 3 times. So now we have 3 times 3, which is 9. And so our final answer here is just 9 cantaloupes, if I can spell it better. It's cantaloupe. Jenny was planning a trip to the United Arab Emirates. Before going, she did some research and learned that the exchange rate is four dirhams for every one dollar. How many dirhams would she get if she exchanged five dollars? So, what do we have here? We know that four dirhams, all right, so dirhams, is equal to one dollar, all right? How many dirhams, let's say x dirhams, would get her five dollars. All right. So let's go set up a proportion. Four dirhams for every one dollar is equal to x dirhams for every five dollars. And now let's solve for x. Well, I multiply both sides by the denominator. We're cross multiply. Four times five is twenty. All right, twenty dollars here, and we have one dollar times x. Don't really need to do that, but we divide by $1 to both sides to get x by itself, and we're left with 20 is equal to x, and so we have a final answer of 20 dirhams we will receive if we exchanged it with $5. Castle bought four bunches of fennel for $9. How many bunches of fennel can Mofor buy if he has $18? Well, let's go set up what we know here, right? Four bunches, so we have bunches here. Four bunches is equal or cost nine dollars. We want to find how many bunches would get us eighteen dollars. So we can set up a proportion. Four over nine equals x over eighteen. And then we want to solve for x. Well, let's cross multiply here. And when I cross multiply, I won't actually multiply 4 times 18. I'm just going to write it out. 4 times 18, and that equals 9 times x. Then from there, we want to divide by 9 to both sides to get x by itself. And this is why I don't multiply it out. 18 divided by 9 is an easy problem to do. 18 divided by 9 is just 2, and now 4 times 2 is 8. And so our answer here is 8 bunches. And eight bunches of fennel will cost us eighteen dollars. If you can buy one fruit basket for thirty dollars, then how many can you buy with sixty dollars? So let's go set uh, what we know here. We know one fruit basket. So we have the number of fruit baskets here. One fruit basket is equal to thirty dollars. How many fruit bags, baskets X can we buy with $60? All right. Let's set up a proportion. 1 over 30. One fruit basket for $30 is equal to X fruit baskets over $60. Now let's cross multiply. We cross multiply here. 1 times 60 is 60, and 30 times X is 30X. We then divide by 30 to both sides to get X by itself. 60 divided by 30 is 2, and so our final answer here is just 2 fruit baskets are what we can get if we spend $60. Asanji took a trip to Mexico. Upon leaving, he decided to convert all of his pesos back into dollars. How many dollars did he receive if he exchanged 42.7 pesos at a rate of $5.30 is equal to 11.1 pesos? All right. So what I'm going to write down first is that $5.30 we know is equal to 11.1 pesos. And we know that Sanji has 42.7 pesos 
and we have to figure out how many dollars, X dollars, you will receive. All right? So let's set a proportion. $5.30 over 11.1 .1 pesos is equal to X dollars over 42.7 pesos. Now, let's cross multiply. We cross multiply here and cross multiply there. We have 5.30 times 42.7 is equal to 11.1 .1 times x. Now, if we divide both sides by 11.1, and let's make this a parenthesis, so it's not as right, parentheses right there, multiplication, there we go. If we divide by 11.1, right, to both sides, we're left with x by itself. That comes out to be a 20.39, and so our final answer here in dollars is 20.39. Dollars. We multiply these two numbers, 530 times 42.7, divide that by 11.1, .1, and we get $20.39. The currency in Argentina, where my family's from, is the peso. The exchange rate is approximately $3 to 1 peso. At this rate, how many pesos would you get if you exchanged $121.10? So, one thing they tell us right off the bat here is $3 equals 1 peso, all right? And we want to find out how many pesos we would get if we exchanged $121.10. How many pesos, okay? So we want to find that variable x there. So let's set a proportion. $3 over 1 peso is equal to $121.10 over x pesos. We cross multiply here. 3 times x is 3x, or 3 times x, right? And 1 times 121 and 10 cents is 121 and 10 cents. We then divide by 3 to both sides to get x by itself, and x equals 40.4. So our final answer here is just 40.4 pesos. And if you're from Argentina, let me know in the comment section below. All right. Mary reduced the size of a painting to a width of 3.3 inches. What is the new height if it was originally 32.5 inches tall and 42.9 inches wide? So we know the original painting, this little rectangle, we said, now it's not to scale, or it's a little probably fatter here, but it's 32.5 inches tall and 42.9 inches wide. I definitely recommend making a picture. She reduced that to a width here, get a little picture here, a width of 3.3 inches. And we wanna see what is that new height, right? Or yeah, the new height, it's called H, okay? So we can set up a proportion here for that. The height to width, so 32.5 inches for every 42.9 inches in the width is equal to our height of the new rectangle and its current width of the new rectangle, the new width, 3.3. Then we solve for h. Well, let's cross multiply here. 32.5 times 3.3 is equal to 42.9 times h. <coughs> Excuse me. Now we divide both sides by 42.9 to get h by itself. And we take 32.5 times 3.3 divided by 42.9, we get an h value of 2.5. And so our final height is equal to 2.5 inches. Molly bought two heads of cabbage for $1.80. How many heads of cabbage can Willie buy if he has $28.80? So what I want to set up here is what we know. Two heads of cabbage, so let's do our heads of cabbage here. And cabbage was a nickname of my sister growing up. All right, so two heads of cabbage costs us, that's a little fun fact, $1.80. How many heads of cabbage, X here, can we Willie buy if he has $28.80, okay? So, 
let's set up a proportion. We know 2 over $1.80 equals x over $28.80. Okay? And we'll put that there. 2 heads of cabbage for whatever you dollar eighty, x heads of cabbage will cost us twenty-eight eighty. We need to find that x. Well, we cross multiply here, cross multiply. So we have two times twenty-eight point eight zero is equal to one dollar eighty times x. We divide the dollar eighty to both sides to get x by itself, and we have x equals. Well, 2 times 28.8 divided by $1.80 is 32. And so we can, really can buy for $28.80, 32 heads of cabbage. Minute Math, Minute Math, when you need help you use Minute Math. Minute Math, Minute Math. When you need help, you use Minute Math, MinuteMathTutor.com.